U.S. Army Specialist Brandon Neely was a guard at Guantanamo. He arrived there just before the first prisoners in early 2002. His job at Guantanamo was to guard the prisoners. He wasn't an interrogator. He wasn't involved in any intelligence collection. He was just supposed to get prisoners in and out of their cells as necessary to escort them around the camp. Specialist Neely was not a witness. He was not a journalist writing about these things. He was not an international observer of some kind. He was a participant in what happened at Guantanamo, which is why his account of conditions there is so remarkable. You have not heard this story before. You have heard a lot of political jabbering about Guantanamo over the years, much of it prompted by the Pentagon's intensive, intensive, but ultimately failed public relations effort to try to make us think that Guantanamo was something to be proud of. The treatment of the detainees in Guantanamo Bay uh, is proper, it's humane, it's appropriate, uh, and it is fully consistent with international conventions. You're welcome to go down yourself. Maybe you have. And taking a look at the conditions. I urge members of our press corps to go down to Guantanamo and see how they're treated. And to see, uh, uh, and to see, uh, and to look at the facts. They're very well treated down there. They're living in the tropics. They're well fed. They've got everything they could possibly want. Um, there isn't any other nation in the world that would treat people who were determined to kill Americans the way we're treating these people. In the tropics. Tonight you're going to hear a very different story about Guantanamo from someone who was there. The very second prisoner to get dumped off a bus at the foot of Camp X-Ray at Guantanamo, the second prisoner to arrive there, was transferred immediately into then-private Brandon Neely's custody. What happened next is in part what led Mr. Neely to go public with his story. He has not been subpoenaed. Nobody is demanding that he give this testimony. He is doing it because of the callings of his own conscience. After serving as a guard at Guantanamo for the first six months of its existence as a war on terror prison camp, Brandon Neely now says that he is ashamed by some of what he did there, and he's still haunted by some things that he witnessed. Moved by conscience, Mr. Neely has come forward. He came forward first to the University of California at Davis's Guantanamo Testimonials Project. He described incidents to them in quite graphic detail. You can read that testimony at our website, rachel.msnbc.com. And tonight, for the first time in any broadcast interview, he is here exclusively to describe what he witnessed and what he personally took part in. Joining us now is U.S. Army Specialist Brandon Neely. His service in the Army included guarding prisoners at the prison camp at Guantanamo Bay beginning when the very first prisoners arrived in January 2002. Mr. Neely was honorably discharged from the Army last year. He's now president of the Houston chapter of Iraq Veterans Against the War. Brandon Neely, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Because you were at Guantanamo from the very beginning, you're one of the first, one of the first people we've had the chance to ask uh, what it was like. I was hoping that you could just describe that very first day that the prisoners arrived there, what you were told to expect, and, and, and what the scene was like when they, when they got brought into the camp. Uh, we were just told from the get-go, uh, you know, it was right after 9-11, the country is very upset about what happened. Uh, we were just told from the get-go these were the guys who planned 9-11, that these were the worst people in the world that the world had to offer and that we were fixing to deal with. The very first day, I was there, you know, when they first came in, 50, uh, military, or the Marines had uh, Humvees with 50 cows escorting the bus onto the Camp X-ray at the time, and you could literally hear a pin drop. Uh, when the buses started coming up, everybody was quiet. Uh, most people were nervous. Uh, we didn't know what to expect. I mean, I've never seen a terrorist. I didn't know what one would look like. Uh, the bus came on. You could hear the Marines yelling at them. Uh, and the next thing you know, the detainees just started coming off the bus, and we were just picking them up. Uh, we were taking them, control of them, taking them through the end processing station. Brandon, you have talked about a physical incident between you and an older prisoner on that very first day uh, mm -hmm. that the detainees arrived at Guantanamo. Could you describe what happened uh, with, with that older man? What happened was we took custody of the man, the detainee, we took him through the end processing station. When he came out through the other side of the tent, me and my escort partner grabbed him, and we could tell at the time he was, he was literally shaking. You could see his hands moving. Uh, he was very tense. He didn't want to walk, so we started screaming at him to walk. Uh, we made it over to Alpha Block, and we put him in his cage, and he was just real nervous, real tense. We put him on his knees. Uh, my partner took off his leg irons, threw the leg irons outside, and he was still shaking real bad, and he still had his goggles on. Uh, my partner went in and with the key to take the handcuffs off, and he, he moved away. We started yelling at him, don't move, don't move. The interpreter was yelling at him not to move. And my partner went again, 
to take the handcuffs off. And when he did, the detainee moved real straight, real fast to the left. And I was on the left side. And uh, just out of reaction, I had slammed him to the ground and got on top of him. And he was trying to get up. And the whole time he was trying to get up, I was just holding him down by the, by, by the head. And a couple seconds later, I was pulled out of the cage by, by other soldiers that had came to help. Um, they, they went ahead and hogtied him, which he stayed there for, uh, I, really, I really couldn't tell you how long. But the uh, next day, we arrived to the camp. Uh, I was walking by, and I could see on the side of, his, uh, side of his face, he was all scraped up and bruised. And I later learned from another detainee, the reason that he moved and he jerked away from us was when we placed him on his knees, he thought he, we were going to execute him. Did you witness other incidents of uh, detainees being beaten up or, or, or punched, any other sort of physical abuse of prisoners there? Yeah, there was a, another incident. Uh, there was an incident on Charlie Block. I remember because I was working the block and I happened to be working night shift for about a week or two and I can't remember why. But there were, the, the medic was making his rounds to give out medication and there was a detainee that was supposed to take insure. A lot of them took insure because they were very malnutrition when they showed up. And he just plain refused and, and this went on for a while and they finally called the internal reaction force. Uh, yeah, he came in, they briefed him what was going on. So me working the block went ahead and walked over there uh, to see what was going to happen. Well they got there, they opened the cage. The the Earth team went in, they took him down, they cuffed him, they picked him up and cuffed him to the cage. Then the medic walked in. And when the medic walked in, he looked up and he saw me. And then he kind of motioned for me to move over to my left a little bit. I didn't know what he was doing, so I went ahead and moved over. So they were holding him, holding him by the face. The medic opened up the insure can and started pouring it in his mouth. And he wasn't taking it. The whole insure it was just running down his face. So the medic looked up and the medic struck him one time on the side of the face. And... Uh, and they got out of the cage, put him back on the floor, and they left. And uh, I turned around, and when I turned around, the first thing I noticed was that the uh, guard tower was directly behind me. So I automatically thought over time that, well, he, he had positioned me in front of that guard tower, so they couldn't see what the, he was doing. So it was the 